Okay, we're back here live in San Francisco. This is SiliconAngle.com's exclusive coverage of Oracle Open World. We are on the ground, extracting the signal from the noise. I'm joined with Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.org. We're here all day. This is day one wrap up. Actually, I don't know if you can call yesterday day one because of the keynote, but this is officially day one for us. Part of a three day coverage on SiliconAngle.com, continuous coverage. Reference point for tech innovation. We're going to break down day one. Dave, what did you think of uh, day one here inside Oracle? Well, Oracle. like I said, it's sort of day one A, right? Larry starts it off Sunday night. Now, last year, as you recall, John, uh, Larry really got slammed uh, by Silicon Angle and some others for really having not really a very we uplifting. Didn't slam no, but we wrote a blog saying, eh, not the greatest talk ever. You had put some tweets out there. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. Last year? Oh, last year? Yeah, oh, this last year. year. No, last year. Oh, last year. Yeah, yeah, last year, right? And then Benioff picked up on that. And this year, I think Larry took that to heart because he slowed down his pace. He really was somewhat more thoughtful and, and probably put more time into it. Now, last year on Wednesday, he was unbelievable. So, I guess my take is, I love the way Oracle sets it up. They simplify everything. The messaging is so clean and so crisp and so compelling, but you always know there's something else going on there, right? And it's great to hear the guests that we had help us squint through what's really going on. But nonetheless, Oracle laying down the, the cloud gauntlet, its strategy, its strategy and hardware and software engineered together, a lot of talk on Flash. Uh, but you know, my takeaway, John, really is you have this situation where there's so much potential innovation going on within the Oracle ecosystem outside of Oracle, within its ecosystem base, and there's a lot of money to be made. I agree, Dave, with most of that. I think, you know, one of the things I will say though, last year we were pretty critical of Larry's keynote because there really wasn't much he was talking about. It was a lot of the, almost like a change of strategy in midstream and you could feel the, you know, the, the, the head fake he was kind of giving everyone. This year, a little, bit more, a little bit more specific. He had actual deliverables. He had uh, four big announcements, pretty solid across the board. You know, infrastructure as a service, check. Private cloud, check. New database, check. Exit data in memory, mm -hmm. check. He hit the marks, and I thought substantively it was a good interview, I mean good keynote, and uh, the interviews today reflect that, Dave, because most people are pretty charged up by the direction that Oracle is going, because it's a validation of the companies in the space that we've been covering. So to me, it's a, it's a, a good and bad sign, good from the validation standpoint, bad sign that you know you got a big 800 pound gorilla looking to roll you over as a startup your VMware, even from VMware to a startup, um, like Aerospike, you got to look at that saying, hey, I got to really dance under the elephant's uh, feet here. Well, and I, I have said a number of times that, that you know, or, Oracle Exadata is not big data, but we heard today from Sean Belvins at Opera Solutions that they are actually building big data applications and services on top of Exa, Exalytics, uh, and we heard from Sean at SAP Sapphire, they're working with HANA. So these are companies that traditionally I wouldn't necessarily associate with big data. I certainly would associate Opera Solutions with big data. And so we're, we're actually seeing Oracle, uh, maybe indirectly, but participating in that big data trend. And as we've said, we have no doubt that at some point they'll pull the trigger and buy some companies and buy their way in. So summarizing day one, great conversations. I learned a lot. A couple of interviews I, I felt were very notable. Um, Billy Bosworth of uh, Data Stacks. Yeah. Brian Boskowski of Aerospike, formerly called Citrus Leaf. Watch that company, Dave. This is a company that I think has the right stuff. It's one of these product innovations that with the right push in the market, it's going to cross over and be relevant. So you know, sometimes the best solutions don't always win. Okay, and I hope that's not the case because those guys have got the technical chops and got some real innovation there. I hope they can get the timing of that and market that up. They got a new CEO and then new VP of marketing, so we'll see that going. The other things that I learned was data beats theory. Great quote by uh, Billy Bosworth. And, uh, and the data is the app from Sean Belvins. Another great quote. I think we called data's new development kit three years ago. That mm -hmm. is the case. Outcome based, know your outcome, then configure appropriately was a nice quote I heard. Um, and we went through the numbers, right? You know, consulting models versus industrialized models, just seeing the real product companies start to emerge. And we all, of course, we then talked about the market caps of the companies out there. Um, and Oracle at 152 billion, could they buy NetApp? Don't know, don't think so. NetApp was on, talking about their successes. And I think NetApp is one of those companies that just might not bite off more than they could chew, like some of the other vendors. I mean, look at EMC, look at these other companies, they're trying to do a ton of different things. Maybe that might be the best strategy for NetApp. 
not taking on too much, knowing their space, and going from there. Yeah, and I think that, you know, it's interesting to me, John, big data was not a part of Oracle's messaging, in, in, at least in a large way, but the conversation keeps coming back to big data, and I think, I think it's relevant because big data is really fundamentally changing the way in which organizations look at how to compete. And so it is all about the data, uh, and I would expect at some point you're going to hear a lot more from Oracle's. No, now the cloud is, is, is into the mainstream, past the hype cycle, now you're hearing Oracle really get serious about it. I think you'll see the same with, with big data. So, you know, it's interesting, this, I've seen some tweets about who is Oracle's biggest competitor. Uh, I think Ray Wang was saying it's IBM. Somebody else chimed in and said, well, Oracle would like to think that. That's kind of the competitor that, that they know. Um, but we heard some people today Billy Bosworth's at Datastax, we heard the folks from Fusion IO. Um, open source in general, John, uh, are more insidious competitors potentially to, to Oracle than IBM. I mean, uh, Oracle knows how to compete with IBM. Uh, uh, you know, it's interesting to, it'll be interesting to see how the open source movement, how the big data movement will affect Oracle. And again, they'll buy their way in, Look but. Look at Dave, I mean, here's what's very clear about Oracle, and this is a big walk away for me from this day, is that, you know, the, for our first Oracle open world, we looked around, and everyone was, had this glum look about them. Oracle, and worried, right? It's different now. I mean, first of all, it's a good business environment, a lot of business deals getting done, but Oracle is responding to the marketplace. And, you know, companies like Aerospike are making, making moves and growing, and you got data stacks, and you got Couchbase. And these guys are affecting Oracle's business model, and they are changing. Now, granted, we can go into the debate of the sentiment of that, and how that's going in the marketplace, what people think of it. You get some people throwing tomatoes at Oracle, and you got people cheering them on. Bottom line, though, is that it's better than sitting around doing nothing. So, you got to give Oracle props for one thing. They are reacting to the marketplace, and they're going to co-opt what's working. And I got to say, you got to give you know, you know, some, some uh, props to those guys for that. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think Oracle does listen to its customers, and then it decodes what the customers are saying and translates it into, okay, either what companies do we have to buy, what, what, what R&D do we have to invest in, and how do we package this stuff so that we can maintain our fundamental strategy of making it easy to do business with us and locking our customers in. I mean, that's essentially what they do. But that's, you know, people can trash Oracle for that you know, posture, but that's an art. You know, you can just, I mean, everybody, every single vendor wants to lock its customers in. You know, Google wants to lock its customers in. They're through great services. VMware wants to lock its customers in. They just don't say it, you know? But that's where the money is made. Yeah. And so, you, you know, know. I'm watching a screenshot here from Jeremiah Ouyang on the collect, from a collective uh, intelligence company about the collective social media yeah. uh, monitoring. And, you know, it's <laughs> like, all the sentiment analysis doesn't say anything because the guys that really matter aren't on Twitter, okay? And the sentiment is only one thing. You can only look at that so far. You got to really look at other things. The people that aren't tweeting actively. The well, they might be on Twitter, but they're not necessarily tweeting. I mean, a lot of people are on Twitter. A lot of people that are on Twitter that don't come up on these cloud scores and these kind of programs are the ones, the people that matter don't come up on these dashboards because the algorithms are, are not properly aligned. So, you know, I think the general sentiment, it, we'll see, and we'll see what happens next year. I can tell you right now that the buzz here is people are buying their boots for next year. Oracle Open World works. It works because business gets done, and, you know, and it's, it's a lot of growth in their big 800 pound gorilla, so. There are a lot of customers here, and, and we are seeing um, a transformation. Uh, we've heard today that the, the DBA, we heard the data architect is becoming increasingly important. That was sort of a, a, an interesting takeaway of the day. And I think that's going to become more prevalent. We've heard that uh, you know, data science is really driving innovation and the data architect's responsibility is to make sure that that innovation actually can be delivered as essentially a product or a service to the organization. So, Well tomorrow we have a great lineup. We had a great lineup of guests today. Tomorrow we got another great lineup. So come watch us on siliconangle.tv, siliconangle.com. Go to our sites, it's free content. Go to wikibon.org, we got free research. If you want to go look at some of our original content, go to wikibon.org slash big data and browse around, all original content. We've been pumping out content, now going on our third season with theCUBE and more news to come as we start to go 24 seven and launch our network. Uh, you're going to see a lot more programming and uh, we'll be back tomorrow live here at Oracle Open World. This is a DAP uh, wrap from day one. Dave, thanks for coming. Props to the guys here. Thank you, John. Uh, Kian, Alex, uh, Michael, and Mark Risen Hopkins. 
And for everyone out there watching, thank you, and thank you to QLogic. Without their support, we would not be here. This is their booth. Come visit them, endorse them, say hi. Tell them John Furrier and Dave Vellante sent you, you get a 10% discount on their Piper Channel products. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think that's an active promotion, Dave. No, that's good, but I like it, John. <laughs> it's like we'll that commercial with uh, Papa John and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him John sent you and you're going to get a 50% discount on your next Fiber Channel card. Uh, cute logic, come to their booth and uh, you'll see them here. That's a wrap from day one, we'll see you tomorrow. Oracle Open World 2012, exclusive coverage, SiliconANGLE, we'll keep on, theCUBE.